This episode of the Capsule in Conversation is brought to you by WeCure, a leader in health tourism. WeCure offers specialist EMDR trauma treatment whilst you reflect and heal in the Mediterranean. Reset your mind and well-being. Speak to WeCure. WeCure.co.uk forward slash capsule. Hello all, I hope you're all well and have had a fabulous week. It's been a mixed bag for me with one thing or another and still broken boilers and loads of other stuff. I feel like we're all stranded in the ocean at the moment and one minute things seem to feel settled and then before you know it, we've got another storm coming in. It's like survival of the fittest and... Well, I can barely tread water. However, my lovely guest today is practically an expert in the fitness field, having completed nine marathons, competed in ITV's diving show Splash, hosts her own podcast Run Pod, alongside presenting breakfast every morning on Smooth Radio. Don't know how she does it. <laughs> it's the wonderful and very fit Jenny Faulkner. Hi, Jenny. Oh, hello. Thank you very much for that lovely introduction. So nice. Oh, how are you? you? Thanks so much for being with me. I'm well, thank you. It's so lovely to, to have you with me. I mean, you're one of my favourite people to see first thing in the morning. I've told you this before. I'm scrolling my Instagram and I'm like, ah, there's Jenny's lovely face and she pops up. <laughs> I know. Do you know the thing is, because I am awake probably earlier than most people, when you do, if for any reason someone follows me on Instagram, generally I'll be the first one you see in your timeline because I've been up for ages. I'm always there awake before everyone else. But then in the evenings... I go to bed before everyone else. So when I wake up, I'm scrolling through what everyone's done at night. So it's a completely different world for me. Yeah, but that's the thing is though, that I love seeing your face because it's always so bright and sunny <laughs> and I think, oh, I'm ready to start my day. And if I'm honest, if you've got Elaine with you, you know, if, if it's Jenny and Elaine day, it's even better because there's normally a really good song involved uh -huh. that will like get everybody dancing. Do you know, it's so frustrating because of coronavirus, Elaine and I have had to kind of curb our singing a little bit because obviously there's the mask, there's the social distancing. And although I still see her in the mornings, we can't, it's really hard to do all that, the singing and having fun together because obviously it doesn't necessarily work with coronavirus rules so it's good missing that a lot corona it likes to really stamp out the fun doesn't it oh i know tell me about it there's so much fun that we're not having right now i know i mean and also i mean you've had this blinking stress fracture on your foot as well but even then you were still managing to do a dance i mean how oh. do you do it do you know what though i did so i sustained a stress fracture at the beginning of august and um, if anyone watching or listening does a lot of exercise, you'll know that suddenly not being able to do something is, it's like the punishment. It really is. And so you have to, you have to stay positive when you're injured because otherwise you just get depressed. And having been down that path before, I wasn't going to. So I just tried to keep busy and stay positive. And also the exciting thing is knowing that when you recover, which will be in no time when you look back in hindsight. But when you recover, you can start afresh. So I have recovered now and I'm now on my second week of going out running and I'm doing it really slowly. I'm taking it gently. It's almost like I've gone back to square one. And from that point of view, it's really exciting actually. And I'm loving it. Oh, that's amazing. The other thing that I loved though, I shouldn't say I loved it really, because I know you're in a lot of pain, but was the, <laughs> the accessory of the foot kind of brace. Oh How you God. accessorized that was interesting with some of your outfits. I know. Well, so I work at Global Radio, which is where Smooth is. Now in the building, you've also got Heart, LBC, Capital, you know, there's loads of different radio stations. Now on Heart, at the same time as me, I shouldn't be saying this to promote another brand, but you've got <laughs> Jamie Theakston and Amanda Holden. And so every day there is a gazillion paparazzi waiting to get that photo of Amanda Holden because, you know, everyone loves Amanda. So um, we all come out all after work around the same time snappers are all there they get um, you know they get amanda and then sometimes i'm not far behind and they do the token photo of me as well and we were both coming out of work unbeknown to me we both had exactly the same outfit on she was just five minutes in front of me or five minutes behind me so i didn't see her same top shop dress right except she was wearing heels looked elegant little mini handbag i'm there with a massive bag carrying all my stuff because i have an enormous big black Stooky boots on, right? And I'm hobbling. <laughs> anyway, the papers did uh who wore it best? Of course she wore it best. <laughs> oh, I don't know. There was something quite um bionic 
about your, your foot brace. But the best thing was, I saw that and I was like, I've got that dress. <laughs> <laughs> we all have it. We all, it's the, like Topshop's best selling dress. Now, Jenny, obviously you're used to those super early mornings, having been a staple of breakfast television and radio for like over 20 years. Have you always been an early bird or do you think that you've just kind of been conditioned to it over time? Definitely conditioned. <laughs> because, <laughs> um, well, so if we go back to when I was, you know, a teenager, I loved sleeping. I loved lying in. And I'm sure everyone did. I remember I used to live um, in Berkshire when I was at school. I was at school and raiding. And I lived quite near Broadmoor Prison, right? Just to give you an idea, the school holidays at 10 o'clock every Monday morning in the area. If anyone listen, w- listens and they're living around there, you'll know. At 10 o'clock every Monday morning, the Broadmoor practice alarm goes off in the entire area, right? So wherever you are, you hear the 10 o'clock siren as if there's someone's escaped. And I remember every school holidays being asleep and being woken by that. So that's 10 o'clock, okay? Standard, standard for a teenager, I think. Now I've done a day's work. I've been for a run. (laughs) I've like ticked off everything. And I get home and if everyone's still lazing around, I'm like, for goodness sake, it's 10 o'clock. Would you stop lazing about? But actually I was beyond lazy when I was younger so yeah I think the work has basically conditioned me to getting up early but I love it now I really appreciate getting up early. I mean I I can kind of like understand that I was such a I loved to lie in I love it but and then when as soon as I got my first filming job proper filming job and you know you're like you're in makeup at around about six o'clock and you're on set early and I remember it at first being kind of a bit like wow this is like (laughs) what what, I'm normally like I used to be the one coming in at five o'clock in the morning especially when I was at uni you know I'll be the one seeing the sun come up so to suddenly have that change but then after so long I really when I went back to the theatre I really missed those early mornings I would be like all my theatre friends would kind of be rolling out of bed at midday and I'd have been up already going you lot are so lazy and they were always going yeah but how did you how do you get your body to kind of like recuperate if you're you know you don't get in from the theatre until maybe mid midnight one o'clock and then you're up again at six like and I was kind of like, mm. so I kind of argue with myself over it. I think I do prefer an early morning, but I don't think I could do quite your early mornings. I've tried my hand at breakfast telly and I was like, <laughs> wired on coffee. Yeah, I know. Do you know the early starts can be a shocker? And I did, I did seven years on early breakfast, getting up at half two in the morning. Oh and God. I'm, I'm not going to lie that I think that probably was starting to affect my health actually. And uh, because I sometimes work in the evenings as well. So like you, when you're doing the theater and you're going to bed late, I was maybe averaging four hours sleep tops. Oh. Um, and that was over a seven year period. And so definitely when I got the smooth job at the start of the year, I started on smooth. People were going and um, asking me questions. So uh, what's the best thing about doing smooth breakfast? And I, sh- I assume they were expecting a great opportunity. I'm hosting a breakfast show. I'm, <laughs> I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm one of those rare fa- single females on a breakfast, all this. Instead, I was going, I get a lion. Yeah. <laughs> I don't get up till 4.30 it's amazing and um yeah that's that basically to me sold me the job as well I'm like sorry what time will I start six yes I'm in no earlier amazing I mean as you just said then it yeah it must really I know for me if I don't have enough sleep it's it really massively affects my mental health it affects my physical health and I find I get burned out really quite quickly and when I'd done like long filming stints, you know, where you're doing 17, 18 hour days and you then got to try and fit some sleep in there, I would find after a week, I'd feel like a nervous wreck, almost like when you first have a baby and you're just living on that empty tank. So, I mean, for you, were you a bit like that as well during that time? Because it's a long time, seven years. Yeah. Well, you just have to develop a routine. And, you know, if anyone's listening and they do night shift, they'll have exactly the same experience because seeing daylight is actually a huge... But it's make or break, actually, and it, it can make you feel uh, entirely different. Now, fair enough, you might be getting your full sleep, but not seeing the daylight really affects you as well. And so for me, I was getting up before before the sun and I was finishing work before the sunrise, sometimes in the winter months. And it did it did affect me. Um, so you just have to get into a routine. You have to I had to do exercise. And without exercise, actually, I I would have probably not been able to even do a year, let alone seven years. But the exercise is what got me through. So maybe a little sleep, do the job and felt amazing because the minute you're up, it's like when you go on holiday, you dread the early alarm to make the plane. But when you're up, you're fine. And then you crash on the plane when you sit still. I was the same. I'd be up, I'd be fine. But the minute I sat down. 
I'd be out cold. So you just had to keep busy. Um, but obviously it's been life changing doing a later job and I don't, I don't have those same concerns, but still for me, I do have to, you know, schedule my life. And likewise, when Ella was a baby, Mm -hmm. I had to schedule things and I was, I had to try and work out some schedule for her sleeping and feeding just so I could keep on top of when I would sleep and my health as well. And it's, it's a really difficult period. And me and my friend, well, we had, we both had our daughters at the same time. We spent probably more time chatting about what time should we feed them? What, do you think, how long, do you think we should feed them again? What, and two hours late? How, when should we, should we make them nap or should we keep them? That was basically our whole conversation for six months until they got themselves into a routine. But we were so obsessed with getting them in some kind of routine and, kind of because it becomes your lifeline though because when they're asleep that's the only time you can do anything and it's the only time where you could even wash your hair or i remember one time we're having freddie and this is awful but you know the car the baby carries that you strap onto yourself now i remember being so like desperate to go to the toilet by myself that i kind of took it off myself and I had to, like, you know, the, the, to the bottom of the stairway, like you've got like maybe a little banister, I had to hang it over there to keep him in his position so I could nip to the toilet. Because I was just like, I can't do it when he's not asleep because I'm just doing it so hard. I know, it's really difficult. I ended up just getting Ella. I'd, I'd carry on going for a run, but I'd just take the pram with me and I'd end up just kind of fitting her in. So I'd be like, I need to go to the shops. Well, I know it's five, four miles away. And if I get her out of this pram, she's going to wake up. I'll walk there, fine. I just did everything as normal, but made sure that I didn't disrupt her and made sure she slept in the pram wherever I went. Because the minute she got in that pram, she was out cold. So I could do, I went to the gym and I used to park the pram next to the treadmill. And I'd be like, I'll only be half an hour. She's just, (laughs) she's asleep. (laughs) It's amazing, really. I mean, now you, I know you're an avid runner and last year you launched your own podcast, Run Pod, which is just doing so brilliantly. And as you say there, you know, fitness is such an integral part of your life. Do you think it allows you to have the work life balance better? Yeah, because do you know what, from my mental health point of view and from my mood I'm so much happier, got much more positive outlook. And that's because I've been doing exercise. And um, when I don't do it, I kind of get a little bit sad and maybe downbeat and frustrated. And everyone can tell just by the way, my mannerisms, the way I'm talking, whether I've been outside and got fresh air and done some exercise or not. And um, so, yeah, for me, it changes my entire outlook, actually. And it's important to me. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I'll go back to now your your stint on breakfast television. You know, you're no stranger to to live television and radio, which can be very stressful and very daunting. Like I said, I dallied in it myself, and it's high pressured. You know, it's 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 a very high pressured situation. Do you like being under pressure? Do you like the adrenaline rush? Yeah. Do you know what the worst bits of when it goes really wrong? But then you know, nobody knows it's going wrong. Until you, until you let it slip. Okay. So as far as the viewer is concerned, everything is absolutely fine. And inside you're like, Oh no, what am I going to do? Or something's happened. Someone's not turned up. Someone said something they shouldn't have. Um, We've got extra time. I'll always remember this occasion. So it was a Christmas show of a program I used to do called Entertainment Day. And it was Ben. I loved Entertainment Day with you and Ben. Ben It was my favorite. It it was so fun to do it. We did it for eight years. It was just amazing. So it was a Friday morning and Ben and I were on and it was the Christmas show and um, Jason Donovan had come on. And he, he was, I think he was on a little mini tour. So he brought his guitar and he sat there and he was just, you know, strumming a couple of, nothing major. We were all having a conversation and in the background, the, the, the floor manager went, seven minute fill, <gasps> like that. What? Anyway, inside we were obviously like, what do we do? And <laughs> basically Jason Donovan was singing. He was guitaring, we were all swaying. We did a full on sing along in the studio. We were just filling time. Now it might have looked, I mean, I'm sure it didn't, but it might have looked like that was the plan the whole way along. I mean, I'm sure it didn't look like that, but oh my God, we were stressed and we're going, okay, one more time. And we would just go again because we had to keep filling the time for so long, but it was really, you know, it was funny, but nobody needs to know it's going wrong. People can just think 
it's going right in a weird way I guess. and how does that like because I know for me I get like the sweats and I get like my heart's pounding and my my hands start sweating and I'm like oh my god and then I panic that the viewers can see it so I'm like oh god how do you kind of contain yourself how do you how do you you know do you just think that's so many years of practice or do you do you have that knack that's kind of like to overcome any form of nerves Oh, do you know, well, I've done many, many auditions early in my career when I was, you know, 18, 19, 20, I just started presenting and I was put up for like loads of big, big, big shows. And um, I'd never done live television. And in every single audition, which was live, I absolutely broke. I didn't know what to do. I cracked under pressure. Didn't really know what to do. Couldn't work with someone in my ear and trying to deliver and listen to my co-presenter. And it, it was just terrifying. And I think that the only way you learn is by making mistakes. Now, luckily my mistakes were in auditions. Admittedly, I'd probably make quite a few mistakes live on television, <laughs> but um, it's a shame they were in such big auditions, but at least they were in auditions and not as much in the real thing. So um, by learning and by making mistakes, you learn not to do, ever do it again because it's gone so wrong and so embarrassingly bad that you will never want to make that mistake again. So I think you kind of learn how to deal with stuff through making mistakes. And until you've made a mistake, you won't have any idea. Similarly in radio, I drive the desk and then, um, you know, like there's always like one big button, do not press, do not press. And you're like, what does this do? And until you've <laughs> pressed that button, you don't know what it does. But once you press it, you understand why they said, do not press that do not button. press the button. But then they've put it on there by going, do not press it. That's yeah. like, you know, don't open Pandora's box. Well, yeah. all right then. <laughs> I know. So and unfortunately, there's all these different experiences that you have and you improve purely by doing them wrong and making mistakes. And generally the live mistakes are the ones that people watch television and they're looking out for them and they love it. And so you just got to go with it and not stress and live television does go wrong. And as long as you can pick up and carry on and or incorporate it or make fun of it or make light of it, whatever the situation calls for really, however different circumstances obviously, you know, will determine how you react. But as long as you can do that and keep moving, and you, not might get still have a job. <laughs> you might, you might be invited back the next time. <laughs> But, you know, in terms of that pressure, as I said in our introduction, you know, you competed in Splash. Now, yeah. that was, as you said, a very terrifying show. It sounds really good fun on paper, but, you know, those boards are so high. And, I mean, how was that for you competing in that show? Because I know that, like I said at the beginning, again, you also, you love fitness. So what was that like? Well, that was that was really funny because there were quite a few of us taking part and they'd only gave, they only gave us two weeks training. I mean, it was really short and... Two, two weeks. weeks yeah because we trained before christmas and the show went out after new year so they're like you get two weeks training then we have christmas and new year and you'll have a little session and then you go live and we were like huh and then so we were all taking it quite seriously because we were all a little bit stressed out about it because we thought we don't have enough time and it was an incredible experience tom daly was one of our trainers wow. um i mean there was a really lovely team of people who were also under pressure to try and turn us belly floppers into divers and um i was given the task of um kind of trying to conquer the springboards so some of them are doing basic low boards i mean i remember there was a, there's a comedian called helen ledgerer she yeah. couldn't even really swim let alone dive she just had to dive in that was i mean literally diving in off the edge and she would have been happy and um, but that to her was a challenge in itself so they just had to convince her that for the show she wasn't allowed to do a jump she had to dive because so that was like the different people have different challenges don't they and then some guys were going off five meters and Jake Canuso from Benidorm was doing a handstand off the five meter board and then a forward roll I mean he was up there I just had to do springboard forward roll into the water absolutely nailed it in rehearsals absolutely sorted it and was actually feeling quite confident because I, I do take things quite seriously I quite take pride in it when I do mm. it and anyway, um, yeah, the board was at the wrong setting because they just, before we went on, they'd had all the pros doing all their bouncy stuff. And when they go on the springboard, they bounce and they go like a mile high and do 50 spins. And then they do an amazing straddle and then another spin on a dive. It's, I'm just doing one spin and go in. But they left it on mega, mega spring. Oh, no. <laughs> so I went up to the end, did a very gentle bounce, which would then give me enough to just go boop. In. and I went 
flying. I think I did almost two somersaults. Anyway, I totally belly flopped and it was disastrous. It was, that was, that was it. That was my, that was my day done. <laughs> it was awful. Do you think it's important though to, to push yourself in these situations, oh. to be brave, to, you know, I, I mean, as a TV presenter, you guys normally do get thrown in at the deep end. You know, I was speaking to Helen Skelton on the podcast at last series and I was like, God, Blue Peter's the scariest thing in the world. They'll throw you out of anything. Do yeah. you think, though, that that's part of the job that you love? And do you think as a person that you you like to throw yourself into a challenge? Well, do you know, one of the amazing things about being a presenter is you get incredible opportunities. You really do. I mean, I would I would never get a chance to go and do diving and be taught by Tom Daly. Likewise, I've done, you know, uh, show jumping reality yeah. show. And I, um, I learned how to show jump on, you know, grade A horses. And it was just amazing. Um, I've done skydiving. I've flown kit planes. I've done loop to loop. I've traveled the world. And yeah, there are amazing opportunities uh, through presenting. Now, some you love, some you don't, but that's part of it. I think the fact is that you're getting given this opportunity to try something you would never ordinarily get the chance to do. And if I had, if I had a job that was doing the same thing, well, I do, I do have a job that does the same thing every day, basically, when I work on radio six days a week. Um, but it's, it's still quite exciting, you know, but it's to do a job with so much variety and so much opportunity. Oh my God, the dog, look at him behind me. Yes. Hello. Oh, oh, there's Jenny's dog. Just there. Cra <laughs> He's crashed out. <laughs> right. Shh, be quiet. This is what happens. He's literally been locked downstairs and now he's come in. Um, anyway, to do a job that you love so much. Alfie. <laughs> Stop it. Can you not see it's, it's fine. Don't worry about it. When we interviewed, when I interviewed Jodie Prenger, she was on the farm. We had oh, chickens, cool. we had cockerels. We're used to animals. Okay, all right. Well, I do apologize. <laughs> I tell you what, when I worked from home during lockdown, I worked from home doing my radio show about, I did about, um, oh, God. I did about um, seven, eight weeks in lockdown here. And he used to bark only when I was doing the travel. It was awful. It was just awful. I'd be like, and now your travel. And then he'd just start going, rawr, rawr, rawr. well, God, Alfie, just of all the times. Anyway, there we go. Um, but yeah, in terms of presenting, you get amazing opportunities. And I think it's just brilliant to take, take advantage of them all because you don't get that opportunity often. And, you know, it's, it's a luxury really and I'm spoiled because of it. And also, you know, you've got Ella. Ella is nine. She's only a little bit older than that, Fred. I mean, I love the fact that you reminded me of this the last time we chatted. You were like, no, 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 we, we met when, you know, I just had my baby and you, you were like popping. I was like, oh God, yeah, my brain is so fried. But yes, Ella is nine now. And do you think as well that as a woman, it's really important for you to show her that you know, her, her opportunities are endless, that she can do anything that she wants to. And like you being so fearless and again, putting yourself in those situations, it, it's a, you, you're a really good role model for her. Oh, well, thank you. Well, I, I think it's important to be a good role model for your kids. Obviously everyone will feel like that. Um, but when you have a daughter who's, who's grown up not knowing any boundaries really in terms of what she could and couldn't do. It's very different to when we were a bit younger and especially then our parents before us and our grandparents where, where women were, were really being my grandparents, you know, that era, women were basically going to get married and have kids. You know, they might have a career, but it was highly unlikely. My mum's era, she had a career, but she gave it up to have me and then returned to work actually. So, um, and not everyone did. And I think, I think it's brilliant that we're changing things around a little bit. So girls now are not being brought up to believe they're going to find a husband and have a family, which is, you know, such an antiquated idea now. And the fact is that girls now are being brought up to believe they can be anything. Do you want to be a footballer? You can. Do you want to be a scientist? You can. Do you want to be an astronaut? You can. You can do anything you want. They just have to work hard, be focused, be driven, be smart. You know, all the, all the things that are required for girls and for boys, um, it's the same now. And it's just, you know, I think it's really important to have that good work ethic and to show that as an example, be an example to your children and show that's what you have to do. And there's no slacking. Don't slack, you know, mm. really really strive for what you want and um, I don't know what it was like for you when you started Natalie with your career but for me I wanted to be a presenter and uh, I was 18 I was at uni studying languages and I'd just done blind date and I said after the back off the back of blind date which I really enjoyed the filming process 
I said, do you know what? You were a contestant on Blind Date, a contestant. You? I was a contestant. I was a picker on Blind Date. And I said, I really enjoyed this whole experience. I'd love to be a presenter. They just went, Phew. everyone <laughs> says this. That's why people come on Blind Date. And I said, well, genuinely, I didn't come on Blind Date for that. I came on Blind Date for a bit of fun. But you have turned my head to the world of presenting. And I just have been really 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 impressed with the whole setup and charmed by the idea of working on television and working in this environment and so I went away and then I worked really hard at doing work experience and creating uh, showreels and doing everything I could possible to get noticed and that's what gave me the break and um, and then you know there was there was a couple of other opportunities when blind date went out people people saw it and then they heard that I'd been doing work experience so I got an opportunity I didn't ever sit back and think it was going to come to me and too many people do Mm. and that's the problem so if you want something to happen yeah you've got to have a bit of luck on your side and you've got to have a bit of good fortune in that respect but also you've got to work blooming hard to make it possible and you've got to you've got to just be creative and try and do something different and think outside the box a little bit. I also think as well, like in our in this era, and it's difficult for our children because I have this conversation constantly with Freddie that they see YouTubers or Instagrammers. I mean, not so much Instagram because he's not really on it, but you know, there, there'll be those teenage kids that do, and they think that there's all this lifestyle that's very affluent and it's rich, and all you need to do is post a couple of pictures on Insta, and all of a sudden you'll be rich and famous. And it's really not like that. You know, you do have to kind of. If you want to be credible and have integrity, you've got to work so hard. And as you said, nothing is handed to you on a plate. Even some of the you know best bloggers that I know that have built their businesses from being just a small little writing thing to now they're constantly doing content. They've had to learn to edit. They've had to learn how to put stuff together. They've had to learn sound and they've had to learn how to create a mini film as well as write really well. It's There's so many other jobs involved in that rather than just a a really good selfie because I think this is the problem at the minute um, with our kids they they think everything's really easy and like they think things come very easily in this world because they can get an instant it's like instant gratification and there's no work you know and and trying to get people to work really hard is hard people don't want to do it and it's you know you can you even see that with some of the the jobs you know that um that people don't want to do in this country people don't seem to want to work hard but yet that's how you that's how you really progress and that's how you will always have solid foundations I think because I think eventually you do get found out I mean is that what you think as well that it, it being credible is far more important yeah no I do agree and I think you know it's very easy to look at a YouTuber who's achieving great success or you know a TikTok star who's literally famous for doing dances and showing videos and they do work hard at that and I could never do what they do. And, but it's, I, I, I don't want my, my daughter sees it and she went for a period of time. She went, I want to be on YouTube, but like yeah, her friends, all did, <laughs> and you're like, but actually it's not, it's, it's not just about being on YouTube. It's not about being YouTube famous. You've got to have, you know, a reason to be on there. So if you're on there because you're clever and you're going to talk about science, go for it. Yeah. If you're just on there because you want to be pretty or dance, well, you better be amazing at dance or you better have a reason. You've got to justify why you're on there. And even then, I want I want to know that you're going to excel or whatever as you're talking about. But it's funny, isn't it, how um, kids now grew up just thinking that YouTube's like where you have to be. It's like, it must be, you know, when I was younger, I used to look at supermodels were like quite famous when I was about mm-hmm. seven, 16, 17. Everyone knew who Cindy Crawford and Linda Evangelista were and would be like, oh, they're amazing. It must be YouTubers now that's the equivalent. It is definitely because I've had the same conversation with Freddie. I've said, if you tell me what it is you want to YouTube about, mummy will teach you how to do the lighting, how to do the filming, how to write your script. I'll, I'll, I'll happily spend time creating that with you. See, you've suddenly made it not very exciting for them. You're like, what? <laughs> I know. And he's like, what? what? I've got to do all that work. But that's exactly it. I'm trying to show him. It's like when people, you know, it'd be the same as when kids used to, you know, watch watch kids TV when, when they were growing up and go, oh, I want to be on telly. And then you find out what the realities of television are actually like. You're normally freezing. It's cold. There's a lot of waiting around or there are, there's like, quick, just get it done now. What? What? You know, you make up lady might come in now and again and it'd be like, okay. And there's always a rush or there's a big lull. 
you're in wellies half the time and you've got hand warmers so it's not as I think I think they often need to see the reality of yeah. what actually goes into something you know it's the same with like Joe Wick saying he's the 10 year overnight sensation it's taken him 10 years to kind of get where he is but because it's almost off the back of Instagram and YouTube. People seem to see he's an overnight success, where actually he's been putting the work in for the last 10 years. I think that's the thing is that we need to instill, isn't it, into the younger generation is like, if you do genuinely want to have some element of fame or some, you know, um, success, you still have to back it up with a really good talent or education or a genuine love for what you do to the point where you're the best at it. Yeah. And also, I think, well, you'll agree as well, that it's quite good nowadays. People are wanting to make sure they are always employable. And especially if you are like us, we've come through a freelance industry, I guess, mm -hmm. or a contracted industry. You've got to make sure that you can move with the times. And, you know, there might not be an appetite for you as a presenter or an actress at this time. So mm -hmm. then you've got to think, right, what can I do to, to kind of find an opportunity elsewhere. So you almost have to um, have your fingers in lots of different pies all the time. And, you know, I know that you've been doing that and yeah. I also have been doing that, but yeah. it's almost like you've just got to keep yourself busy and it's enjoyable to keep yourself busy and try new challenges. But also by doing that, it's important nowadays because you don't know how long things are going to last in that, in this industry anyway. Well, this is it. I mean, we've only to look at like the, you know, the, the uproar of the Chancellor's comments when, um, you know, the thing about retraining and I still am quite insulted by that whole thing. However, you know, as a freelance person, I've always done that because it's part of how I maintain doing my job because there's always a bit of downtime. So there has to be other things that I'm passionate about. You know, it happens for me that I'm passionate about um, well-being and, and fashion and beauty. They're the other things that I really love. So I've been able to kind of turn my attention to those things whilst things are a little bit quieter in the performing side. And I know the same for you. You know, you love fitness so much and you've obviously got, you founded Collar, which is your collagen supplements company which can I just say I have here ah. I'm so excited to try these so thank you so much for sending That's them to all right. me um, but again yeah you have to have that other passion that other thing to keep you going because you just don't know what's around the corner you don't know when your time to shine might be up for a bit or we're in the middle of a global pandemic you know, know. It's, you've got to always have that plan B don't you yeah and also the thing is as well you've got to don't think it's you know a reason to give up hope either because you might have to you might have to look for other opportunities but it doesn't mean what you're doing is gone sometimes you know there'll be a lull and you might find that there's a great opportunity around the corner you just don't you it's really hard to predict what's coming but that's why i just always think stay positive and be upbeat because also sometimes these things happen when you least expect it an amazing opportunity comes along or something life-changing will happen and take you in a completely different direction you might end up doing something that you never expected and i think that's one of the lovely things about this day and age traditionally we'd all do we'd all train for one job that would be it we wouldn't really stray from that path because we wouldn't have trained for anything else there was no social media or anything to realize that you could do other things and so, yeah, I think that just be prepared and be open to experimenting with new ideas and new opportunities. And uh, and you never know, even if you, you don't find a new break, a new career break, you might just find a new hobby or make new friends. I did. I took up golf two years ago. I just thought I'd try it. Got an entirely new social life. I have an entire new obsession and it's just so good for my mental health to get out there. And, you know, if more girls can take part and join in, oh, we have the best time together. So I just know you are girls. the poster girl for golf because honestly as well, especially in the summer, and I know this is a bit bad, but when I'm seeing you in your nice golfing outfits, I'm like, God, she looks good. She sells <laughs> golf. She really sells it. And I think Kirsty Gallagher plays as well, doesn't she? She and plays like, a bit of golf too. Her, well, her dad's a really yeah, good golfer. Yeah, well, obviously, yeah. So and I'm like... But when I see the pair of you, I'm like, oh, and then Catherine Zeta-Jones as well. I'm like, these women make golf look really cool. It is cool. You need to come and do it. Honestly, it's so, so fun. And I now play with my husband. If we've got a free day and Ella's at school a little later, we're like, have we got a few hours? <laughs> <laughs> For the golf. It's, it's, but it's just really nice because 
you just get to hang out and it, on a nice day as well. It's just brilliant. It's like a, a really good energetic walk with a bit of a challenge in the middle. And I mean, occasionally we might bicker over a shot that's gone wrong or he's lost his ball and I'm like, oh, or I've lost my, anyway, <laughs> it's just, it's just really, really fun. I cannot recommend it enough. I mean, speaking of fitness, you know, as I said at the beginning, you've taken part in like nine marathons and you were going to do the marathon this year as well. Um, which, to be honest, I, I've said this to you before, makes me have the biggest girl crush on you because I did the Leeds half and thought I was going to die. And I was <laughs> like, how can anybody do this twice? And you've done like nine of them. How do you prepare for, for a marathon? Do you know what? It's funny that you say that, though, because every time I do a half marathon, I've done a lot of them. I think, how on earth can I do? How on earth do I do a marathon? I couldn't go again. But you do push yourself, you know, hard for a half marathon. And the thought of going, you know, going again is just hideous. But if you're doing the real marathon, the full one, you'd be much more gentle on the first half. <laughs> you wouldn't be smashing it. So, um. I don't know. You've got to do a lot of training and the years I haven't done so well, I haven't done the adequate training and the year I've done the year I did really, really well. I trained very hard and trained, you know, a lot and was very proud to have get a PB. And I've, I've never been able to beat that because I've never <laughs> trained as hard, but yeah, you get what you put into it basically. So if you've got time and effort and, you know, and a drive to run a good marathon and achieve something that will make you feel proud. And as you cross that finish line, you might do what I do and swear at the first person and go, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> and then within a half an hour, you're like, oh, I wonder if I could do better next year. And it's, oh. and every time I cross the marathon finish line, I, I kind of think, I wish that was a warm up and the marathon was next week because I feel ready now. It's so ridiculous. I love the and fact that you said, Every time I cross the marathon, thing, every time like, I can't even bring myself to think about it. And you're like, every time I do it, you know, that old thing. Yeah, but the difference is so every time I've done it, I know that I know when I cross that finish line, I'm going to hate it immediately. And then within the half hour, I'm going to want to do it again. However, before I cross the finish line for maybe a mile, two miles, maybe five or maybe 10 miles, I'm going, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? Could I fake a fall? Could I fake a fall and get, <laughs> get St. John's ambulance out of here? And I'm thinking all these scenarios. Then I cross the finish line and I'm like, I love that. I loved it. I'm going to come back next year. Well, this is the thing, isn't it? It's like that, that stress and that difficulty ma makes for growth. And then you have that sense of achievement and that's how you evolve and become, you know, better, stronger, fitter. I've had it. I've done the Tough Mudder a couple of times uh -huh. and honest to God, every time yeah, I'm the same as you I, I got electric shocked twice on one on oh, one particular no. one particular round and was like on the floor hysterically laughing because I was so embarrassed with all the spectators looking at me but then I came out of it and went yeah I'd do that again and I was thinking what why why would I do that but it's that sense of achievement isn't it yeah. and it's the I think there's something mental in it as well in the sense that you know that discipline and, and training for something and having a goal like I really missed this year I'm sure you're the, probably the same of I normally have a, a few fitness challenges set up because it does give me something to focus on and it gives me something to feel proud of myself and at the end of the year when I look back I go oh well, I achieved that this year and I achieved this this year and what a, what a brilliant year that was I think it's that sense of achievement is that the same for you? Yeah, no, it definitely is. It's nice to, at New Year, you know, as we go into New Year and everyone goes, what's your resolution for this year? I'm like, well, I've got 10. Because then I figure that if I, if I kind of mess up most of them, there must be one, there must <laughs> be one that I can stick with. But generally, my inner old, you know, Mine are all challenges that I was already thinking of doing. We'll run a marathon. We'll run a half marathon. We'll run. But I want, I want to stick to these challenges. I think they drive me through the year. I love, for instance, if there's a race in, in Easter time, I love that I can train for that. And then after Easter, I can have a little bit of a break. And then likewise, have one in the autumn and look forward to training in the summer for that early autumn race. It gives me something to focus on, something to work towards. And then there are periods when you don't and you can just relax and run for fun or go and do CrossFit or go and do just go to the gym. Or if you didn't want to do anything, you can, you know, it's just, um, it, it, I just like having a bit of focus for a while so I get very restless when I don't have a plan I am one of those people that you go on holiday with and you wake up in the morning and I'll be like here's your schedule and it <laughs> irritates everyone in my family but I, I, I can't even go to bed the night before until I know 
what the plan is for the next day. And my husband and daughter just, they just humor me. I know they do now. I know it, but they just go, yeah, 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 we'll do that. The next day they are already off plan by breakfast. And I'm like, this is not, this is not what I should And how does that make you feel when they go off plan? Are you kind of all right about it? Or does it make you feel like you're going to hyperventilate? Well, it means I have to sit down and rework the schedule. (laughs) They just let me do that. (laughs) They just, it's, it's, I just like having a bit of a plan. It just makes me feel a bit more relaxed. It's ridiculous. I'm not someone that likes just an easy day with nothing on and see where we go. I'm like, nope, nope. I really want to know that we've got something to, to focus on at the, end, at the end of the day or in the middle of the day or something, something to do. Even if it's what we're having for dinner, I just want to know so I can look towards something. So do, how do you, do you ever sit still then, Jenny? Do you ever like take a moment of just going calm because I, I I don't know if, if you're the same as me people you know with, within well-being you talk about meditation and all this stuff now that is something that I cannot mm. do I yeah. try really hard to meditate and everybody says you make excuses you're always making an excuse but I'm like I can't sit for that long with quietness it drives me mental well if I sat that long I would start thinking about things I need to do I'd be like okay so hang on a minute I've got, and then I would start scheduling the rest of the day I'm like whenever this meditation finishes I will be doing this 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 so yeah I can't sit still either and sitting still would be watching a film that yeah. to me that's relaxing but achieving something by watching a film and I do love watching movies and binge watching tv shows and I'm all over that and I'm, I'm all over it. I'm absolutely love that that's my relaxing time when I sit down and do nothing but otherwise I need to be doing something and the more the more active it can be the better you're like I think there's two types of people you're either a Monica or a Rachel and I think you're a Monica like me (laughs) (laughs) and I don't I really would love to be a Rachel but it's just you know that's who I want to be but it's not yeah anyway I mean, obviously, you know, everything, it's seemingly always so upbeat and so positive and, you know, but obviously, you know, nobody can be like that all the time. When you do have down times, you know, how, what are your, what's your best advice for kind of picking yourself back up if you have, you know, suffered a a knock or you didn't get a job or whatever, or you've had a fall or again with your injury, how do you pick yourself back up and move forward? Well, I think, first of all, you have to remember that you will come around the other side. You will come out of it. You just have to really focus and think positively and move on because the more you allow something to get the better of you and the more you allow something to upset you, it will spiral and it will only get worse. It's, it's a fact. You know, if you start being upset about some, say you didn't get a job and you get downbeat about it and you wonder why and then you start going, why did they get it over me? It becomes a really bad battle in your mind and it's really easy to let that go out of control. So the best thing you can do, and it's really difficult, is to find something positive to take out of it, focus on something else and just take it as a lesson and move on. It's really easier said than done. But you've got to, you've got to smile and say, okay, that wasn't meant for me, but maybe the next thing is. And just, I think you've just got to almost believe in fate a little bit more and um, just be, just have a really open mind and be positive. You've got to think positively because otherwise you can really get stuck in a rut. I find it, I find it quite easy to get in a downward spiral. So by being positive and doing something to make you think, think it's for the best, helps and otherwise as well I'll go out for a run I know it sounds ridiculous no I was gonna say that I said another I was about to go oh you probably go and pound the pavement (laughs) I do and so if I'm feeling a little bit stressed out everyone knows that for me I just need to go out for a run because it boosts my mood makes me feel better and it's like um I don't know if you have this with exercise as well by going out and having that time on my own and thinking I can have music on or not um or podcast on or whatever but by going out and just thinking on my own it's just like the issue lifts. It's like everything becomes clear. The weight's off my shoulders and I come home and I'm like, let's move on. It's fine. And it's, it's, yeah, it's my, it's kind of like my meditation, I guess. I think, I think as well. And um, the other thing that I find from it is it's that reassurance. It's that sense of achievement. If I've got out on the pavement and I've pushed myself to go for a run, I've still achieved something that day. I've still gone, you know what? everything else might have gone to pot but I actually managed to go and run five kilometers today as well so that's a pretty cool thing and then it's almost like for me it's a little pat on the back so of going 
it's not all bad you know you're still here you've got your body you can still run you've just taken in nature and uh, yeah it's that kind of reassurance I find of uh, of the high achiever that I am <laughs> no but I think you've got to I think you've got to do something for you you've got yeah. to do something that makes you feel good and you know there's everyone has good days and bad days you've just got to look and make sure you do the stuff that makes you feel good as often as you can I mean, like for for you, you know, we've just talked a little bit before about this, which is which is Colo, and that. I mean, when I was reading up on this company and 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 what it is as a as a liquid collagen supplement, I didn't really have a clue that collagen had such a big impact on like your running, like how how it can really affect your joints and your bones, and uh, you know, add um, so you're much more supple. Tell me how you how that whole business has come about. Well, I mean, I started running marathons 2009. And I remember I was doing it and a, a vitamin brand came to me and went, um, can we send you some product? Because you know, running marathons, you could do with this. And they listed a few things and they said, you should always make sure you're taking collagen. I didn't even know really much about it. So that was back then. And I took a little multivitamin and had collagen in it. And then over the years, I stuck with it actually. And then I might change the brand here and there. And then eventually I went to just the collagen. So I realized collagen was really good for your bones and your joints. Like I get sore hips sometimes when I've been running, they get slightly frozen. So I thought, okay, I'm going to up the, up the collagen, the amount of it. So I went and just started taking collagen on its own. And you realize that the more you take that actually there are other benefits like your nails are getting better your hair is looking glossier your skin's looking more hydrated and just eventually over years I started realizing that when people went you know your skin looks good it is because I'm taking collagen it's not because you know um this month I'm using this moisturizer or it's it's, it is because of what what you're putting into your body Hmm. and so there was just one day that someone was asking and my husband just went why don't you do your own brand of collagen because I wanted something that had certain vitamins in it as well yeah so that was it. It is as simple as that. We then spent a year making colo and um, we made sure it had loads of collagen. So there's seven grams of collagen in every, in every sachet. But then we also have 100% your RDA, vitamin C and B12. And then there's other little bits, B1, B5, B6, l And there's other things in there that are really brilliant as well. But the fact is the collagen is something we should all be taking from the age of 25. Um, the collagen in your skin starts going, so you start getting wrinkles, okay? Yeah. That's a fact. <laughs> I'm like, fact. oh God. <laughs> I know. But you can't stop that happening. But what you can do is you can replenish your collagen supplies. And the lack of collagen is what creates the wrinkles. So by pushing the collagen back in, you know, you're going to help fight the aging process. Um, you're not going to stop it, sadly, but you will absolutely limit the advancing of it. Um, and also, you know, there's just so many other benefits for collagen as well. Um, it, it thickens your hair, strengthens your nails. That's the first thing people notice after about four weeks. They notice that their nails are amazing, actually. So if um, I just rip this off and start taking it now, I'll be like, oh yeah. my God, I feel amazing. <laughs> It'll be fantastic. But it's just, it's just got so many good benefits. We're really proud of it, actually. But in terms of like starting a business, I mean, that's a whole other thing, isn't it? I know as like starting my own business, it's a whole different ball game. Mm-hmm. You know, again, you have to learn so many different skills, so many different things. And there's so many things to consider that you don't yeah. necessarily know about. And, you know, I never did a business degree. I didn't have a clue what I was doing. Have you enjoyed that process as well of this whole other side of life and side of business? Yeah, I mean, it's been a big learning curve for me. So there's no way I could do it on my own because I'm not qualified in all these areas. But so I am I'm qualified in knowing the product I want and we spent a long time developing it. And so, um, and developing the taste and doing all these things. So I know what I want and then I will help promote it. So that's kind of the way it works for me. And I assist the other guys. There's two other people. There's my husband who's amazing at marketing and making things happen. And he's launched businesses before. So he's kind of like got that business mind. And then we have Tash, who's our third, the third co-founder. And she is totally switched on when it comes to social media and stuff like that. So the three of us, we all have completely different areas of expertise and we all came together to taste it and to make sure we got the product. And we spent a year developing it. So actually we spent a year finding the right collagen supplier and um, finding the right manufacturer in Britain. We wanted it all to be British 
British and finding distribution centers. So it's, I mean, I wouldn't have been able to do that without them. I wouldn't have known what to do or where to go, but the three of us together were able to make it work. And it is funny. You do learn a lot and it's amazing from that point of view. And it, it can be done, but it does take a lot of work and it does take commitment. It's one of those things again, you can't expect something to happen because you sit around waiting for it. If you want to make something happen, you've got to have the drive. Absolutely. I mean, you know, before we kind of finish up, I've just, you know, this year has been so tough on everyone and people are really having to um, rethink so much, like just rethink their career path, rethink you know, with redundancies happening, you know, we're being told to retrain. What would you kind of say to um, anyone at this moment in time who's kind of come to a crossroads or is feeling really nervous about diversifying or pivoting their business? What would be your, your advice to them going forward about opportunities? Oh, it's so difficult. You know, I can... I, I have lots of friends who have been really, really badly hit this this whole year. Different different stages, different times when they're least expecting it. Some of them knew it was coming. Some of them didn't. You know, I think you've just got to try and remain positive because you've got to look for what's on the other side because everything everything will change at some point. Everything will improve, and you know what they they, they say, don't they? The sun will always rise again, and it will. You've just got to to get to it. You've just got to get to that moment. And it's it's so blue and difficult. And just surround yourself with friends. Talk to people. Don't keep it locked up inside. Talk to people. Do something that makes that lifts your mood. I mean, I, we talk about me loving running. If if it's your thing, fine. If you find something else that will help you, just get some time outside and get some just time to think and see clearly or to take you away from the situation. You know, a lot of people in lockdown were trapped on their own and just by getting outside for that hour a day, they got a break and they got to see outside the house and they got to get some fresh air and they probably got to put perspective on things again. Just keep moving forward, make some little goals, mini goals, little challenges, even if it's send your CV, work on your CV, just do something, little goals that will keep you focused and keep you moving forward. And um, do you know what? It will be fine. It will. You just, just stay positive. Oh, Jenny, thank you so much. It's been so lovely to chat to you. And you always bring such a lovely, sunny, fresh energy. And I come away myself now going, oh, yeah, I feel really good. So, you know, thank you so much. And no doubt when I'm scrolling tomorrow morning, I'll see your lovely face first thing there smiling at me in the Smooth Radio studio. Um, thank you so much for being with me today. Thank it's been you. An absolute pleasure. Oh, thank you for having me so much. And apologies for my uh, dog being like a blooming crazy dog he's now looking at me he's totally out. oh no we love it we love having kids animals we're, we're used to it don't worry oh, about good. it <laughs> thank you and um, thank you so much to you guys at home as well today for tuning in and being part of our conversation we do hope you've had a lovely time with us and that you've enjoyed a moment to yourself if you'd like to find out more about collar please visit www.collarhealth.com you can also catch up with jenny every weekday morning from 6 a.m till 10 and on saturdays too on smooth radio and over on instagram at jenny faulkner if you'd like more well-being fashion and beauty content you can visit us at our website www.thecapsule.co.uk where you can also catch up with our previous podcast episodes by visiting the in conversation page and subscribing to any of our podcast channels and youtube please do leave us your rates and reviews we've loved hearing your feedback on this series so thank you so much for that if you're a social butterfly you can also catch us on instagram and facebook at official capsule i will be back next week with another lovely lovely guest but today all that's left for us to say is goodbye so it's goodbye from jenny oh goodbye thank you and goodbye from me this episode of the capsule in conversation was brought to you by we cure specialists in emdr trauma and mindfulness therapy we cure offers one-of-a-kind treatments whilst you reflect and heal in the mediterranean Reset your mind and well-being. Speak to WeCure. WeCure.co.uk forward slash capsule.